Hello everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the latest release as a part of the Doctor Who Robert Harrop limited edition hand-painted figurine series. This time round, the Daffodil Auton from the third Doctor story, Terror of the Autons. This release is the third release within the Terror of the Auton series and is limited edition to 225 units. Sadly, this statue has in fact now sold out on the Robert Harrop website. It sold out, I do believe, in a matter of an hour and a half, something like that, on the day of release. It was a very, very highly wanted statue by many. Uh, so if you do like what you see throughout this review, your best chances of getting this product now is probably from third-party sellers on the likes of eBay. So taking a look at the packaging for this release, it does of course follow exactly the same style guide to the vast majority of Robert Harrop releases that have came out in recent years. So you have this lovely darker blue theme of of course the TARDISes on the side made out of a corrugated cardboard ensuring security for the statue on the inside of the box. Also present is the stacked variation of the Doctor Who logo as well stating that this is a limited edition hand-painted figurine with the Robert Harrop logo presented at the bottom. The centre contains the subtle yet stylish Gallifreyan text banding, the 48th release as part of the Doctor Who series, and it is the Daffodil Auton from the third Doctor story, Terror of the Autons. At the back contains some standard company information, and then finally, at the top of the box, once again, we have another sticker which repeats the same details, but this time it also includes a unique identification number, mine of which being unit 108 out of 225. Unlike some of the older figures within the series, the polystyrene casing has now been removed and replaced with foam, and the statue does of course come in a dust-proof jacket. In other words, a plastic bag. The Robert Harrop collection is of course a series of high-end collectibles, so as a result this statue does come with a lovely certificate of authenticity, featuring the same style guide to that of the rest of the box, once again presenting the unique identification number, as well as a little telesnap of the Daffodil Autons from the story itself. But flipping around to the back, this also has a little quote, story synopsis, and some further Robert Harrop company information. So here we have the Daffodil Auton, and I love it. I really, really do. It is one of my favourite Harrop releases that have been released to date. I think that that is completely down to the fact that this statue is so visually striking and different. Now this statue is in fact the third in a mini-series of collectibles, all from Terror of the Autons, released alongside Roger Delgado as the Master, as well as the small troll doll. The thing that I love about this statue is that yes, it is the Autons, they are a very classic Doctor Who monster, but the whole design of this figure is so incredibly basic, but also at the same time so effective. It's really creepy. My dad can in fact remember this from when he was a child, and when I told him that I was getting this statue, he was like, as long as you keep it in the glass cabinet, locked and away, I will be fine. Um, so it's one of those ones that certainly sticks in the memory because I think the paint application in particular has really captured that creepy essence. As soon as this statue was announced I knew I wanted it for the shelf because I do not have the Daffodil Auton in any other form of merchandise. One of the Robert Harrop statues is that no matter what character you purchase you know you're going to be getting a statue which is an incredibly high quality sculpt with an equally brilliant paint application. So starting off in the very centre of the statue, we have the blazer, which has been given a very vibrant yellow finish. He almost looks like a character from Heidi High. Statues released by Harrop are a full cast kind of resin material statue, and it certainly doesn't use anything like cloth. So as a result, the paint application really does need to replicate the texture that an item of clothing would have. I think that has been really effectively done here, because we have that yellow base colour, and then a series of darker shades which have been applied over the top to basically emphasise the sculpt, but also bring a little bit of depth to the costume overall. One of the main examples of this is in the very centre of the jacket where we have the button here for the blazer and then we have a few creases which are stretched around the side of the figure's torso and more detail has been drawn from these through the use of a burnt sort of darker orange colour. One side of the blazer is actually sculpted ever so slightly higher than the other piece to make it look like it folds over itself and on either side we have the addition of a pocket. It's not really too much going on here, it's simply a rectangle which has been raised ever so slightly above the rest of the jacket and we also have a stitching line running up the side. 
Similar technique has also been used on the lapels. Again, this sculpt has been raised above the rest of the blazer and attention has been drawn to these using this shaded design, which can be seen in particular around the side here, which is really cool indeed. And then flipping around to the back, we have a continuation of this brush stroke design. So we don't just simply have a block color of yellow. A lovely gradient has been applied over the top of this simply to give it a bit more character. I also really like the way that the sculpt differentiates between creases within the blazer, but also the regular stitching lines of the various panels within the jacket. So the stitching effect is also being used going down the center of the spine. As you can see here, a very subtle straight line going all the way down. Due to the left arm being raised, we do have a few further details within this arm. Lots more creases in close proximity to each other, especially around this elbow section here. Again, this is emphasised with the inclusion of a lovely darker orange wash. As for the other arm, this has been sculpted in a very tense, rigid manner, simply going straight down. Like most other humanoids, there actually isn't a gap between the main torso and the arm piece here. This has been emphasised using a darker paint application. But again, this very rigid positioning of the statue almost makes it look very robotic, very emotionless and very creepy. Of course, no Auton would be complete without the Auton gun. Now, this is in fact one of my first ever memories of Doctor Who as a child, watching the 2005 story rules where the hand just clanks down, and that's been excellently recreated on this statue. The hand has been painted with a peach skin tone, and we have a few darker red paint applications in between the fingers, as well as picking out the smaller details, such as the nails at the end. As for the inner workings of the gun, again this has some rather nice paint application, some lighter grey has been used, complemented with a few dots of black to represent the mechanics of the different gun components, and then we have a few smaller dots of lighter paint towards the sides, and we have the gun itself, of course this does protrude from the main section of the hand, this is in fact a rather small piece of material, so I do certainly recommend being careful with this, because if the figure falls over, I imagine this will certainly be one of the first things to snap it's been given a rather sharp bronze paint application. In a rather ominous, threatening manner, the hand, which isn't half cut open with the gun inside, is in fact gloved, but in a clenched position. So we do have the detailing of the thumbs there coming around the side, and then a vibrant white paint application matching the shirt and the legs. Being very careful and tipping the statue upwards, you can actually also make out a few fingers sculpted into the hand. I do love the way that the overall outfit for the Daffodil Auton is either vibrant yellow or vibrant white. So we do have the suggestion of this shirt underneath the blazer. This has been replicated in a very simple manner, but this is an ever so slightly off-white. And then we have this lovely detailing of a golden splodge design there in the very centre. This has been given a little bit of depth, as we can see here around the sides where we connect to the blazer. We have a slight subtle grey paint application to give the impression of shading, which again is small paint apps like this that really bring the Harrop statues to life. So now the incredibly creepy head that we have on this statue. It is of course a very unusual design because we have a general human face shape, however this has really been emphasised in various different areas, so of course the cheeks have been made to look very doll-like, they've been certainly increased in size quite a lot. We have those rather dazzling, daunting, soulless eyes and also the lips in there as well, equally looking very doll-like, almost like some very bad makeup has been put onto the character. So we have some rather brilliant paint application which has been used on this because it is very bold. So we have those excellent, very daft looking eyebrows which kind of fold around like arches and we have those very piercing eyes there in the very center, very sharply and crisply painted. I love the way we have the line coming around the sides, but then we also have that soulless pupil in the very middle complemented by that sharp white. But also this design has some more subtle paint applications. We have that excellent shading which has been applied to the top of the eyelids, again really making the eyes stand out. But not only that, you have that rather peach-like skin tone which has been used and then complemented by that very unusual blush effect which has been added to the side of the face. And a bit of shading around the nose as well, with of course the nostrils there highlighted with a darker paint application. And then the lips, the very unusual lips. Of course these are separated, we have the top lip and the bottom 
bottom lip. The bottom lip is ever so slightly bigger than it probably should be compared to a real human lip. But then we have this excellent but also slapdash paint application. So it doesn't quite fit the lines around the side of the lips, in particular here, as it goes up to the side, which is very effective indeed. I am absolutely blown away by the sculpt on this face. You have so many various levels to the facial features. As we tilt around to the back, we have a very basic paint application, which kind of gives the appearance of hair with a light brown. Head sculpt is completed excellently with the addition of the hat. Now the entirety of the hat has been given a lovely base colour, rather sandy in design, and then of course completed that banding there at the very top, given a lovely vibrant red finish. The top of the hat does have an ever so slightly speckled finish, I think this might be down to the material that is used to make these statues, but once again we have that lovely sandy paint application. The sides of the hat here are in fact very thin, so this is quite delicate. Again, I definitely recommend being very careful with these statues. As always, they are a collector's piece, they're not for younger fans. A slight knock against a surface would most certainly probably shatter this. The overall stance and positioning of the statue, I think, is really clever, because at first glance you look at it and just think, well, it's a regular humanoid kind of stood in a normal, everyday position. But then you kind of take a closer look and you realise that everything about this statue is very rigid. So moving further down the Daffodil Autumn statue now to take a look at the trousers. Once again, these are a kind of greyish white. It's certainly not a pristine white. And very much like the jacket, the sculpting and the paint application really do work well together here. A of creases and wrinkles have been sculpted into the trousers to give the impression that the material is hanging on the body. But not only that, we have a lighter grey paint application which has been used. In particular, this can be seen around the back of the statue where we have a little bit more creasing surrounding the top half of the leg. One of the most detailed aspects of the Autons costume is the shoes. These are so detailed for the scale with some excellent paint application. So we have the various different panels of the shoe which have been sculpted into the statue itself, but not only that, we have this lovely stippled highlight there with the various dots highlighting the edges of the various panels of the shoe. And again, we have this lovely pristine white which has been used, really drawing a lot of attention to these, but also we have some additional sculpting details of the laces there going up the very centre as well as the sole of the shoe at the bottom, complete with the heel at the back. Now, of course, we don't have just a solid brown, which has been used. We have a nice series of shades of brown, once again creating that kind of worn leather effect. Same can be said for the opposite shoe as well, some excellent detailing on this, and it does look very realistic indeed. As with all Robert Harrop statues, the base of the figure has been uniquely sculpted in order to represent an environment that the character was featured within within the TV serial. So this time we have a rather grassy field complete with a daffodil. A lot of nice detailing on this. The overall base has this lovely rippled design over the top to kind of replicate the various different strands of grass. It kind of looks like it has been crushed, probably with all the autons sort of walking over it. And then we have a series of different shades of green which has been used to really bring this to life. So to make this uniform of the other Robert Harrops that we've seen released, we do also have a white band going around the entirety of the bottom of the figure. So green is so different to the rest of the colours which have been used on this figure. So as a result, it really stands out a lot. A final inspired touch to really make this base pop. It is the little daffodil which has of course been dropped on the floor which is oddly eerie and again really represents the character from the story itself. So the stalk has been given an ever so slightly lighter green highlight to make it stand out. And then we have the head of the daffodil itself, which again is a very vibrant yellow, much like the blazer above. Some lovely detailing on this. You can clearly see the different petals. And then of course the central piece there in the very middle. So yes, this is excellent. And of course, tilting the statue upside down, we are greeted by yet another sticker. This is exactly the same sticker which is featured on the box. So we have the usual details, including the unique identification number and the Robert Harrop logo. This also has a rather nice felty material base, ensuring that when placed on a surface, it doesn't slide about too much when on display and should sit securely. I just thought that I would mention as a little bit of a side note because the Daffodil Auton is probably going to be quite a popular release when it comes to interest from people who don't collect the series. The Robert Harrop line is 1 12th scale, the character options series is of course 5.5 inch, therefore as a result with a little bit of camera trickery you can almost get away with it looking like they're in the same scale. But ultimately side by side the Daffodil Auton is much much bigger. 
it would be absolutely terrifying if they were actually this big within the story. Just in case if you are a fan of the Robert Harrop series, do stay tuned on this channel as I've got another Harrop review on the way in the future as I'm going to be taking a look at the Troll Doll because I've been filming this Daffodil Auton review over a period of a few days and within filming this review, this lovely, interesting creature has landed on my doorstep. So there we have it, that is my review of the Doctor Who limited edition hand-painted statue of the Daffodil Auton from the third Doctor story, Terror of the Autons, as produced by Robert Harrop, and another excellent high-quality statue to add to the shelf. I really do love the sculpt of this statue overall, it stands out incredibly, but also the paint application is that perfect balance between vibrant colours, basic yet sharp details, but also considerable rough where it needs to be, which I think works excellently and really does bring this statue to life. It is probably the most unique variation of Auton that we've ever seen throughout Doctor Who. It's excellent to finally be able to see this variation encapsulated within a high quality product. So if you do enjoy Terror of the Autons as a story, I most certainly do recommend tracking down the Daffodil Auton, especially if you already have the Troll Doll and the Master. As I mentioned at the very start of this review, this product has now sold out on the Robert Harrop website. It sold out in a matter of hours, so probably your only chance to get this statue now will be from third-party sellers on the likes of eBay. So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it, do of course stay tuned on the host productions for regular Doctor Who content, and do of course stay tuned for more Robert Harrop reviews hopefully in the future as well. So thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.